In the Iron Age, an Iranic people called Wusuns inhabited some parts of western China, Kyrgyzstan, and southeastern Kazakhstan. In this video, I will show you the autosomal DNA results of one such Wusun individual who was a male who lived in 4th century, somewhere between the 4th and the 2nd century before Christ, before Common Era, and who had Y DNA, so he was a man, he had a Y chromosome, and that means he had Y DNA, and his Y DNA was R1AZ93, which is nowadays very common in Kyrgyzstan. According to my Nashakotu, this is what he looked like. Uh, he's predicted to have brown eyes instead of dark brown. Usually people of East Asian ancestry and African ancestry get predicted as having dark brown eyes, but he had 67% likelihood of brown, regular brown eyes. Uh, he had a snub-shaped nose, which is why I depicted him with sort of a snub-looking nose, and black hair, and according to Snipper Free, uh, he was definitely white-skinned, this is why I depicted him with white skin. Uh, he did not have BH2 or BH3, which are blue eye haplotype 2 or blue eye haplotype 3, but he had other light pigmentation variants in tier, tier 1, and one very exotic variant, which I will get into later. So this is the exotic variant that I was talking about here, he had AA, and the implications of this genotype is that it increases the likelihood of blonde hair much much more, it increases the likelihood of blue eyes and white skin, the whole, tri the whole trinity, eyes, hair, skin, everything, basically everything is lighter. Uh, what's interesting is that this is a very rare genotype for modern South Central Asians who have it only at 0.4% frequency, and even in Northern Europeans, it's not that common, it's 1 in 10. His genotype in DRD2 was very typical for non-Europeans. Uh, by the way, I should specify this is the Pro 319 Pro variant of DRD2. I shouldn't say just DRD2 because DRD2 is a gene. It consists of like hundreds of different SNPs, hundreds of different variations. But in this variation of the DRD2 gene, uh, he had a genotype that's not so typical for Europeans and very typical for everybody outside of Europe, uh, which is GG, which means he was not a no-go learner and had a slightly increased risk of schizophrenia. And in this variant of the DRD2 gene, uh, he had a pretty typical genotype for Europeans and Africans and everybody else. Uh, now, a stereotypical genotype for East Asians would be TT here, because East Asians are pretty much the only ethnicity who have the T allele in this variation, but he did not have it. In Komtsval Met variant, he had a very stereotypical European genotype, AA. By stereotypical, it means that this is a genotype that's only found in Europeans, or, or almost only, because it is found it is found at very, very, very low frequencies outside of Europe, but it's pretty much only found in Europeans, but not every European has it. A lot of Europeans have AG or GG here, like me, for example. I don't have AA, but this individual had AA, which is a warrior with the IE, uh, which means very slow reuptake of dopamine, which means more dopamine building up in the system, uh, which means ad advantage in memory and attention tasks, but less stress resiliency. He did not have the sociopath gene. He did not have derived EDAR, which is a gene implicated in mongoloid or East Asian facial features, so no East Asian facial features for him. And he did not have the European lactose persistence mutation and was most likely uh, lactose intolerant as an adult. And uh, this is his Eurogenes K36 result with the Admixture Studio. As you can see, the highest categories here are South Central Asian at 31% and North Caucasus, uh, but he also scores a little bit of Eastern Euro and East Central Euro and even Siberian. Uh, what's very fascinating to me is that he does not score any of the East Central Asian category, which nowadays picks in Kyrgyz people, but uh, he had not a single percentage of this category. Here is his Eurogenes K13 result, and by the way, by observing this result, you can see the big gaping difference between this individual who was living in Tian Shan in the Iron Age and modern inhabitants of Tian Shan, which are mostly Turkic. Uh, modern Turkic inhabitants, inhabitants of Tian Shan would have around 50% East Asian plus Siberian on this calculator. This individual only has 10%. And here is his oracle result with this calculator. As you can see, he's closest to Tajiks in single population. And in mixed mode, he can be modeled as a mixture of like Tatar plus Baloch, or what I like is 72% Tajik plus 28% Erzia, or uh, Kargopel Russian. Uh, this is his result with the MDLP K16 calculator. Now, once again, uh, you can see complete lack of Siberian, complete lack of East Asian components. And uh, in fact, 
a lot of step, a lot of uh, Sintashta ancestry, and with the oracle he's closest to Shugnan, which are people in Badakhshan, and he can be modeled as a mixture of people in Badakhshan plus Komi, or people in Badakhshan plus Udmurts, or people in Badakhshan plus Chuvash, and I like this result a lot because this really reflects what you see with the official G25 for this sample. And by the way, this is the official G25 for this sample. As you can see, he's closest to Tajiks from Roshan. I think Roshan is Pamiri though. And also, I know this is the most northern shifted of the Tajiks, so he's closest to the most northern shifted of the Tajiks, and he can be modeled as a mixture of basically Tajik plus a little bit of Eastern European mixture with like Siberian, because it's Udmurt, Ket, and Lithuanian, which is kind of a mixture of Eastern European and Siberian ancestry. This is this individual's result with Harappa world. Now, as you can see, the Mongoloid components here, such as Southeast Asian plus Siberian plus Northeast Asian, only make up around 10% of his genome, uh, which is very little compared to modern inhabitants of Tian Shan. Like, if you look at the Kyrgyz genome, or if you look at the genome of a Kazakh or an Uyghur, you will see the majority East Eurasian. You will see above 50% East Eurasian. This individual had only 10% of East Eurasian ancestry, so this was a very Caucasoid individual, and he's closest, he can be modeled as a mixture of Tajiks plus Russians here, or Tajiks plus Lithuanians. Okay, now this is his result with the Pan DNA LK12 calculator. You can see the dominant component here is Caucasus HG, and this is not because this individual had a lot of CHG admixture, I can promise you that. It is because the components here, the allele frequencies for the components here are made using modern ethnicities, modern people, because we don't have access, we don't really have like thousands, uh, hundreds of thousands of ancient genomes of CHG and like BMAC individuals to actually make the, you know, we don't have access to that. We we make these components for these calculators, you, we simulate them using modern allele frequencies and it just so happens that the Caucasus shift in Europe and in Middle East is pretty much identical to the uh, Iranian Neolithic shift that you observe in Pakistan or South India or India, uh, which is why the Caucasus HG category is acting as a substitute for Iranian Neolithic admixture. And this is what he scores with Ancient Eurasia K6 by Gidrosia. Very interesting result. Uh, very interesting because he actually scores less Natufian than I do. Uh, kind of surprising. I think Finnish people in general tend to score an average of 27% Natufian, so he was as Natufian as the average Finnish person today. Uh, however, much less West European hunter-gatherer, much more ancestral North Eurasian than the Finnish. Uh, with the Oracle, let's look at number 6. He's getting modeled as a mixture of Tajik plus Scandinavian hunter-gatherer, or number 8, which is Tajik plus Matala 12, or number 11, which is Tajik plus Western hunter-gatherer. So he was more Northern, uh, he was more European shifted than the Tajiks today. And finally, I saved perhaps the best for the last. Uh, this is his result with Gidrosia K3, now he's scoring 22% East Eurasian, uh, which is, it's kind of high, but I think it's mostly from the an ancestral North Eurasian admixture. I don't think it's mostly from Mongoloid or Siberian ancestry. I think it's mostly from ancient North Eurasian admixture, that's what I think. And I looked up on, on the Oracle data for this Oracle, um, Kyrgyz scores 70%, so this is literally the opposite of Kyrgyz. Kyrgyz scores 70% East Eurasian, 30% West Eurasian. This guy is the reverse of that. Thanks for having watched my video until the end. You can download this sample in 23andMe format from link which is going to be in the description. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And of course, in the comments, uh, correct me if I said something wrong. If, you said some, if I said something you don't like, correct it. Um, I listen to what you say and, um, you know, give me suggestions for other videos.